Hi, this is Chris Walker. Today we're going to talk about emotional transparency. Emotional transparency is all about living as nature intended, getting happy, inspired and in love. And when we don't live in t as nature intended, that's what we miss out on. So, emotional transparency. So what's behind an emotion? What's behind an emotion is something that you have to experience to find out. But let's talk about this second stage of um, of emotional transparency, which is growth. When you're green, you're growing. When you're ripe, you're rot. And when you're ripe means basically that your beliefs are stuck. It means that y your ideas are stuck. So beliefs and ideas are the two things that cause all emotion. So the great thing about an emotion is they show us where we're stuck. And therefore, emotion is a great gift from nature. Every t the more severe our emotion, the more stuck we are. And the greater the opportunity we have for growth. And people come to me and talk about this a lot, but basically, the more emotion they have, the more great the opportunity is for them to, to grow in their life. The more, the more angry, the more regret, the more resentment, the more of these emotions an individual has, the more opportunity there's <coughs> it is for them to to evolve excuse me so rather than condemn emotions we need to embrace them to feel them and to acknowledge them in our lives this is an important step there's a lot of people who would who might think that emotions are bad no they're not bad they're a, they're a, they're a wonderful wonderful opportunity if you know the difference between your beliefs your ideas and your thoughts which are generating these emotions and growth. So, summarizing it all down, we evolve from emotions. We have the opportunity to evolve from emotions, more the point. And there are only two real emotions, fear of the future and guilt of the past. So all emotions, whether it's anger, sadness, whatever it is, are categorized into those two, ter two areas. Now, guilt of the past is basically unfinished business, unresolved issues from the past. And unresolved issues from the past make it impossible to go into the future. So there's one indication that whether you're carrying any baggage from the past is when you think of tomorrow or the next year or the next and you can't imagine what it could look like, guilt's holding you back. There's the other side of this is when you think of the future and you kind of like get an idea of where it could be, but you refuse to admit it to yourself. And that's the other side of emotion, fear of the future. And that's just simply solved. The fear of the future is solved by preparation. In other words, dealing with whatever emotional baggage is not and belief systems and thoughts that are st stuck in the present and they're unable to cope with the impending stresses and strains of getting a bigger life, going into the future and fulfilling your vision. So there's a process called unlearning. Now we've been through this in the first tape. There are seven levels of emotion. They rise up from the most extreme primal one, which is got to, have to, to should, need, want, desire, choose and love to. But instead of being stuck at a level of emotion and saying, uh, I need to process this. What we're trying to indicate here and make emotions transparent is that emotions are for the purpose of growth. So if you can take a got to and move it to a should and move it to a need to, to a want to, desire to, choose to, you can turn the darkest emotion into love in a very short period of time. So a lot of positive thoughts are a got to low grade emotion. We can move that up by adding some negative thoughts to that positive thought and bringing it to at least a middle ground where we're negotiable. But we add some more negatives, we make it inspired. So, and it can work in the opposite. If we have a really negative emotion, like a hate for something or a resentment or an anger towards somebody, simply by searching for the positives in, those, in, in that situation and balancing the negatives, we start to evolve ourselves through every circumstance that comes our way to a more higher state of being, in fact, to love and inspiration in life. So the person who stays stuck in emotion can't experience unconditional love.
So there's a lot of social conditioning that makes us think that we're not being emotional when we really are. Take, for example, the person who says, I've got to be vegetarian because it's very spiritual. Well, that person is operating at an extremely low emotional level and as far from spirituality as you could get. A person who says, I hate violence. Their hate in itself is violent. And so they've developed a, a, a complete emotional um, justification for anger and, and violence by saying they hate it. Abortion. I'm against abortion, for example. Somebody sitting there, they've taken an emotional stand against abortion. Uh, in fact, the truth of abortion, of course, is that there are positives and negatives and it's a choice. So an emotional stand breeds a very unstable person and they buy, we buy into these good is good and bad is bad and holidays are fantastic and we buy into these pre-packaged social conditions that are not necessarily balanced, inspired or loving. So we get stuck and we get stuck in a got to, should or a want to, need to place. We really fulfill only half of our human potential. Maslow drew a hierarchy and he said, talked about self-actualization, but he'd got it wrong. He missed at least 60% of the human condition, which rises above emotion and rises above the pleasure pain paradigm and starts looking for a sense of purpose in life. So let's have a look at emotion in a really simple sense. Here's an emotional life drawn on a graph. This person has very big uppers and very big downers. Here's another life drawn on the same graph. This person is inspired. Their uppers and downers are more momentary. They're, they're hourly uppers and downers rather than annual ones. <laughs> and therefore they're maintaining a more stable, less energy consuming existence. If you overlay the two graphs, what's interesting to see is that we're interested in having all the uppers of the uh, individual who's extremely emotional. They'll tell you all the great things that happen to them. But eventually they'll also reveal all the bad things that happen to them. And we get this idea that we can have all the good news but forego or let go or get away from by some sort of mechanism of spiritual or self-help process, get away from all the negatives. It's impossible. Nature seeks a balance in all things, especially our emotions. So there's two lives but what's even more interesting and I think this is absolutely superb understanding is that the highly emotional person has these white spots the highly emotional person crosses the line of their life very occasionally and those line spots are moments of inspiration and moments of unconditional love whereas the person who's inspired who's having less emotion crosses that line very frequently they have many many moments of love they don't have the high uppers they don't have the low downers they, but they do have frequent moments of unconditional love and inspiration most important thing to know about an inspiration in order to make them transparent is don't trust an emotion don't react or act on an emotion process an emotion evolve from emotion and bring more love into your life this is chris walker have a great day remember live as nature intended you'll get what nature intended bye for now